Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California. It's such a beautiful day. And guess where I'm at? I am down in Gary's garden. And today he told me he's going to harvest some chayote squash for dinner tonight. Here we are. We're here to watch you. So what are you doing today? Well, I'm going to harvest some chayote squash for dinner. And there's a, I've got a lot of them growing along here. I'm not going to harvest them all today. But some of the ones like this one here, it's starting to split on the bottom. So the seed inside's going to be kind of hard. So I'll harvest some of these. And I'll harvest some small ones too. So I'll have a few different ones that I can use for the next couple of days. So I planted them along here. We've, we had some growing, what, 30 plus years ago? And this is a plant that really gets out of control. So it's good to, if you're going to grow them to have them in a place where they're not away, that they're not close to any of your trees and you can harvest them easily. So I built the tunnel specifically for squashes and different things. And I've planted a couple of different varieties of chayote squash. I'm not going to go over that today. But basically I've planted them in the ground. So I had to cover this one because the rabbit got in and started chewing the base. Apparently this tastes good. Now that I've got it planted, it's a perennial. This will come back next year with a lot more vigor. It'll probably be twice as big next year. And the, it produces a tuber underground that's edible. It tastes something like a potato and that will just get bigger and bigger and the plant will live for maybe three, possibly four years. So this is a good plant, very productive and I like the flavor of it. So Before you start, I want to walk down, show us how many there are. This is amazing. I haven't been down here and noticed them. I should have done a count before we started but yeah this has got a lot on them it's uh two four five six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine twenty ten twenty eleven twenty twelve thirty there's 30 in this section so i'm just going to give a guesstimate there's probably 50 or 60 on this vine there's two vines is it still flowering it's still flowering and setting fruit uh let's see these are smaller fruit, and it looks like it's got a couple of little flowers that may have set too. I don't know if they're going to make it. Uh, it's November and it's starting to get cooler. Like my grapevines are starting to change color. So I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if we've got enough time for them to set fruit. The flowers that it, it continuously flowers for a long period of time. So earlier on I was harvesting them when they were about this size. And that's really the best size to harvest them because the seed hasn't gotten too big and you can just slice through it. And it's really good to eat it when they're that size. These, the seed might be a little hard. They're not fully ripe. They haven't quite colored up yet, but some of them like this one's greener. The ones along here are, are greener. I was harvesting from this end earlier. Uh, let's see, some of these are going to go a little bit longer. They'll change color too. So these ones here, like this one, it's, you can see the seed in the bottom there. See, I'll take that one off. And that's the end that it germinates from. So the seed and the growth will come up from this side. It'll send down a root and send up the growth there. Oh, here's another example. That one's a younger fruit and that's a mature fruit. And again, this one, the seed's showing. The seed's edible too. And the seed's going to have a lot of nutrition in it. So I'm not concerned that it's got a big seed in it. It's just going to be a healthier fruit to eat. And it's got a very mild flavor. 
it's really well worth growing if you can grow it you figure out if you can grow it in your own zone this is a very productive perennial fruit to have yeah I didn't I had a, a few different types of pumpkin growing here this year and the only thing that really did well besides the shark fin melon was the chiote squash I've got a Tennessee sweet potato pumpkin here and that's the foliage has died off so that's really ready to be harvested I'm just going to leave it here until I want to harvest it so it can just sit and allow it to um, let it harden up on the outside so I can store it and it'll get sweeter if I leave it longer yeah, because sometimes I've noticed you can bring them in and they can start to rot, but they don't rot outside. Yep. And then anything else, I, I, you know, like I can just trim off this, let it drop on the ground, and that becomes compost. So it's very easy to maintain. All this growth, once it dies back, I'll just come through and I'll trim it off, drop it on the ground, and it'll be good to go. So how many are you harvesting today? You're, you're leaving them and just, what, are you going to pick them as you use them? Pick them or as, pretty much? as I use them. Uh, let's see. I was looking for some smaller ones, but right now most of them are pretty big. I just want to find one that's not so right. Yeah, that's got it. Some of these have got really well-formed seeds, so maybe I'll just start, start with that. So I picked five, and... Obviously for the two of us, that'll be enough for a couple of meals. So how many do you cook when you fry them up? They're so good. You just you fry them up with butter. How many do you cook at a time, I should ask? One like that, I usually cook one at a time. If they're smaller, there'll be two or three. So I've got a way of preparing that. And my, I do have another video that I'm slowly working on, and I'll cover that in that video. Yeah, because your video is very important for people that want to start planting them in the spring or whenever they start. Yeah. Because there's things they may not know about them. So are you going to plant any more with the ones you're growing here? Or do you, because of what you know now about them, are you going to do it differently? Yeah, I'm going to plant more next year. If I can get another trellis like this set up, I will be planting more. And that way I'll, I'll keep my squashes separate to these. And... I'll have, have them growing in the ground as well. So I may even harvest some tubers. Next year I might harvest some tubers. Oh. So there's a plant here and there's another one here. And this is going to have an underground tuber. It'll be quite a ways down. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's going to be a big tuber under there. And that will just go dormant for the winter? Yeah, this will go dormant for, for the winter. It'll, see, this, some of the foliage is starting to die back. And it'll just die back to ground. And then in the spring, it'll come back. None of the stalks that are up, the, the trunk of it, above ground will live? The all turn brown? That, that's, a good, that's a good question. From memory... I don't quite remember it. It may. See, so it's got new growth coming back. Um, when, I guess it depends on you how the winter what? is. De depends on the climate, I think, because this is starting to grow back. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I guess now we just wait and see how what happens yeah. here. Which, which makes me think the ones that are, these may be starting to grow again. If I planted that now, it might start growing. So I'm not used to growing it in the, our zone. So I'm, I'm used to growing it in Australia when my, where my dad grew it, where we had a frost and this wouldn't survive a frost. But we're in a frost-free zone, so it is possible that this will start growing now. Yeah, I don't know. I, you just know, I hadn't thought about that. 
Well, I just know 30-something years ago when I planted it here, it was a nightmare to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, I it covered the avocado trees. One plant covered everything. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't like it. You were cooking it. Now I like it, though, for some reason, but things change. The, so. fir the first time my dad grew it, he came into the house and he told my mother, I know, know why they call them chocos now. They're called chocos in Australia, C-H-O-K-O, -O, but that's not... It's not because they choked plants out, but they plant, they choked out my, up my dad's vegetable garden. So that's another name for them in Australia and New Zealand. Oh, wow, well, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. There's so many. So it, it's better that I think right now with our weather and nothing's bothering them that you pick them as we need them. Oh my goodness. Because if you took something like this in and put it on the counter in the house within a week, because it's not treated like the store ones, it will start to break down and rot. Or you would have to store it in the fridge. And that kind of changes the sugars and the texture and the flavor sometimes of certain plants. And when it's outside, I've noticed a lot of these will just stay. It's, the climate is perfect, at least here. So anything else you have to say? No, I think, I think that's it. Um, this with, is beautiful. So with that, thanks for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're cheating. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. My water chestnuts are dying back already. You mean for the winter? The winter, yeah. We'll have to come down here and do a garden tour soon before everything, well, it's not going to all disappear. But look at that. All right, let's go get that up for dinner. Beautiful day. He never knows when I have the camera on. You're awful quiet. Zoe? Zoe?